Instead of taking the train ferry train combo from Syracuse all the way back to Rome, I took a train from Syracuse here to Catania, another city on the island of Sicily. But before we get started, eh, we must address the elephant in the room. Since Catania has its own airport, I thought I could explore the city for a day, then catch a plane directly to Rome. Yes, I'm a fan of sustainability, but sometimes uh, I need to sustain my sanity. So we got less than 24 hours. Let's take a look at my hotel, then we hit the bricks. Porta Ozira is a gate that connects the Duomo Square to Via Etnia. This landmark in Catania was completed in 1696. Catania's main cathedral is dedicated to Saint Agatha, the patron saint of Catania. The elephant in the room, or at the center of the Piazza del Duomo, is Fontana della Fonte. It depicts a smiling elephant carrying an Egyptian obelisk on his back locally known as Leotero, the symbol of Catania, the local lore has it that the obelisk possesses magical powers. Ever since eating cannolis back in Rome, I've learned that they originate from here in Sicily. I never miss an opportunity to grab one or two. We'll call it research. Church of San Biagio was constructed in the 18th century and is believed to stand on the site where St. Agatha was martyred. The Benedictine Monastery of St. Niccolo Laurinia is the second largest Benedictine monastery in Europe. The monastery is an annexation of the Church of St. Nicholas Arena, a late Baroque church that began construction in the 1500s. The church is dedicated to the monks who followed the ways of St. Nicholas of Bari. The Odeon, a semicircular construction, had a capacity of about 1,500 spectators. It was likely used for rehearsals of the shows held in the nearby theater, the Roman Theater of Catania. Its current appearance dates back to the second century and was brought to light from the end of the 19th century. I have to admit, I really love roaming the charming streets of this city. Beautiful churches in almost every corner. Which reminds me, one of my friends and fans, Soji, told me, Chris, enough with the damn churches. Now, of course I listen and have long since incorporated other things in these videos, but sometimes uh, I just can't help it. I mean, they're beautiful. Okay, the Teatro Massimo V. Bellini opened for the first time in 1890 and is considered to be the heart of Catania's musical life. The theater is widely known for hosting some of Italy and the world's finest singers since the 19th century. All right, it's time for the local bear movement. So let's stop here at the exit bar. The final stop is Castello Ursino. Castello Ursino is an enormous castle now made museum at the heart of Catania and is called the Civic Museum of Castello Ursino. <laughs> wow, that was a little redundant. Okay, the castle was built around 1950 AD as a royal home for the Emperor Frederick II, King of Sicily. Right alongside these train tracks, I'll find my way back to my hotel in about five minutes. Not sure what the purpose of these hanging water balloon things are, but maybe someone can explain their purpose in the comments below. For now, I'll just assume it's a prank waiting to happen. Uh, as I was saying, the train tracks right behind my hotel. A sound, unlike most, I find comforting. As most of you know, I love trains.
that's it for this series of Be Rudderless. In the next series, we'll explore Slovenia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, and Serbia. Subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell so you know when I've released those videos. Don't forget to like this video, and as always, thank you for watching. Arrivederci from Catania.